So I mentioned back in the early in the early days, we did not have a lot of cheerleaders. We did not have a lot of encouragers. But uh, as the Lord has, has had it, He's He's brought uh, a couple of them with us uh, this weekend. And uh, our daughter Victoria got married yesterday, and so we say congratulations to Victoria and Braden. But I knew ahead of time I would be dehydrated today from all the tears that we cried leading up to this week and yesterday. And so today, one of my very best friends in all of the world is going to open up the Word of God with us today. Would you welcome Pastor Robert Shingleton, everybody? Amen. It's good to be alive and be in the house of God. Somebody say Amen. I just, I just hugged Pastor Dave. I said, I can't quit crying. I've been crying since I got here this morning. And the presence of God is, is strong in the house. I've got one thing on my mind I want to share with you before uh, we get into the Word of God. And uh, This morning when we left the hotel, we, uh, we pulled in across the street down there from the movie theater where you guys actually had your first corporate service, I guess. And I looked across. I was waiting on my wife. She was inside. And I looked across, and I seen that little side door. Uh, and I can remember helping you at the end of the service carry equipment out that side door. And uh, my mind went back to last night at the wedding. I was blessed to be able to sit with uh, some of your core members of the church. And uh, some that came on shortly after. And you know, I'm uh, the founding pastor of Jewel City Church. We're 30 years old. And I want to say those core members, I appreciate you. I have a lot of respect for you. I've buried several of our core members. Charter members. And uh, the easiest thing that I do, or your pastor does is bring the word on Sunday mornings. It's the decisions and all the struggles and the problems that the families go through. Sometimes I catch myself saying to my wife, I wish I only had to deal with our problems. But it don't come that way. So the those that have stood beside Dave and Patty and, and their children from all these years, I want you to know I love you and I appreciate you. Can we as a Church, give those a hand. Can, can we do that? Um, well, we've been standing and sitting and standing and sitting. It's kind of like a Jane Fonda workout session. But if you would, I'm old school. Would you stand as we read the Word of God? The title, I always title every message. <clears throat> and it's good uh, for my wife and I to be with you. We've been coming over here a long time. It's the only... The only church that I uh, go preach at besides our home church have no desire to go anywhere else. So you're like family to me. Uh, the title of the message today is Can I Have a Witness? And uh, to our missionaries, I highly respect you and appreciate you. And so the title again, Can I Have a Witness? Paul writes to us in Romans, the 8th chapter of verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Father, we bless your holy name and we exalt you, God. You are almighty and God, you are worthy of all of our praise. And God, now as we enter into your word, God, Lord, I pray that every heart would be opened, every ear would be opened, receptive, God, for what you would have for each one of us today. In Jesus' name, and amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You may be seated. The world is waiting on a manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. That word manifestation, just in the, in the Webster Dictionary, it means uh, a demonstration, to demonstrate something. They're waiting, the world, the world is waiting to see what God is really like because through darkness of the world, 
They have been deceived, used, and abused. And if you want to live in the world's kingdom, that is exactly what will happen to you. But when you step out of the darkness of the world and enter into the kingdom of God, when Christ comes to live within you from the new birth, you step out of the darkness and into the light and you have the Father in heaven is going to bless you beyond anything and it's a whole different lifestyle. How many came out of the darkness uh, where you was abused uh, and used uh, but now you're in the kingdom of God and you're in the family of God and God has changed your life. If that's you, you ought to give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. Has God been good to anybody? I said at Crossroads Church, has God been good to anybody? Say amen. amen. Woo! Unless we bring the truth, somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, give them the truth. Unless we bring the truth and let people see how good God is, many people will not come to him as Lord and Savior in their lives. In John chapter 8, verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. A lot of people say the truth will set you free, but actually the knowledge of the truth. Hosea chapter 4 said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Uh, you need to read the Word of God and grow in God and watch what God does in your life. This thing that we're walking in is not just something that we do on Sunday morning. It is a lifestyle. Uh, it is something that we do seven days a week that we walk with God. Can someone say amen? So as we walk with God and learn more about God's ways, uh, we learn who he is uh, so that we can share his goodness with the world. Uh, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, uh, Go ye into the world, and go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, all of us can't be missionaries uh, overseas. Thank God for the calling that is on their life. But every one of us are in this world. We may not be of this world, but we are in this world. And you have that circle of influence around you at the ball field, at your school, at your job. We got to be a witness. We got to demonstrate the goodness of God. All you got to do is open up your mouth and tell people how good God has been to you. My testimony is I had a drug problem when I was a kid. Mom and dad drug my butt to church. That's my testimony. And then I went haywire and found myself in the pig's pen like a prodigal son. But the Holy Spirit on a Friday night showed up in the bar room and touched my heart and I looked at my friends, what I thought was my friends, and I said, I love you, but I'm getting up and I'm leaving this place and I'm never coming back. That's a little bit of my testimony. My testimony is I'm not the same that I used to be. God has touched me and changed my life, and I'm not ashamed. Let me tell you how good God is. Three years ago, I had five strokes. Uh, they said I should have been in a nursing home and not even know my name. Uh, well, my name uh, is in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I can still move my feet. I can still move my hands. I can jump down off of this platform, I come to tell somebody that God is looking for a man and a woman and a church uh, to be a demonstration of the goodness of God. If God has been good to anybody, get your hands together and give God a shout of praise. Woo! I said, has God been good? Woo! I ain't jumping off there no more. We got steps at our church. <laughs> Woo! Listen to me. We are to grow. Grow in God. The things that are unseen become more real. And we learn to live in the kingdom. God help me. 
In Galatians chapter 4, verse 1, now I say that the heirs, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. In other words, the heir, and that's what we are as born again believers, as long as we act childish, Nothing differs from a servant. God has given you and I the kingdom. But unless we grow up in him, we will still be slaves to the world system. And the world system is from the devil. You hear me. Romans chapter 8 and 17, the Bible says, And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, and that is what we are as believers. As long as we act childish and operate from our flesh, rather than our spirits, we will be slaves, though we be heirs of the entire kingdom. My God. If you received a certified letter today that you was an heir of an estate, that everything that this individual possessed has left you. You would not be late. I bet you got a lot of people come late every Sunday morning. Couple. We got people at our church and they live right beside the church or 20 minutes late every Sunday morning. <laughs> we get up to start worship and there's just a handful and then boom, they come from everywhere. I guarantee you if you had a certified letter from an attorney it said, meet Monday morning at 8 o'clock to go over what you've been left. You'd be there before they unlock the doors. Can I say amen to that? I'll say amen because you're not going to say amen. amen. <laughs> and then you would go line by line by line by line. We've been given a contract. We've been given a covenant. We've been given the kingdom right here on earth. And it is time we grow up and learn what God has in store for us and how God wants to bless us and how God wants to use us. Give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. Everything in the kingdom, everything that you and I need is in the kingdom of God. Healing, deliverance, prosperity, peace, truth, love, joy, everything that we need. We need to grow up and learn and learn. However, we cannot receive it with the five senses. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. God has designed the kingdom so that we must inherit it by the Spirit. The entire kingdom belongs to you and I if we are believers. And as a church, and I hope this don't offend you, but if it does, Send me an email, because I don't do emails. <laughs> I don't do Twitter, Skitter, or Ditter. <laughs> Old school. As a church, and when I say as a church, I'm talking the body of Christ as a whole. We've been operating at a level far beneath our means because we have resorted to the flesh. Some people that are saved still have a short fuse. They get mad, they blow up, they cuss. That's just who I am. No, that's who you were. That's not who you are. You've been born again. You have a desire to grow. You know when a two-year-old wears a diaper, it's cute. But when you're 40 years old and you're still making a mess in your pants, it's not cute. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that might not have been a real good illustration. <laughs> that's all right anyhow. This has been a problem in the church since the days of Paul. Pay attention to this. This is what he writes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. Listen to this. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. 
For you are yet carnal. For whereas this is among you, envying and strife and division, are you not carnal and walk as men? The Amplified Bible says, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh, behaving yourselves after a human standard like mere unchanged men? Get this, man. Could you imagine if your pastor sat down with you and said, hey, you're acting like a baby. I can't even talk to you in a spiritual way because you've not grown up. You're acting like an unchanged individual. He'd put his resume out somewhere else because people can't handle that. Oh boy, getting quiet. Paul called the Corinthians babies, babies in their Christian life because they were not yet spiritually healthy and mature. I shouldn't talk like I did 30 years ago. I shouldn't be offended like I did 30 years ago. There ought to be some growth in our life. The proof was that they quarreled like children. That's what he said, division. Man, I'm, I'm giving God the glory on this. 30 years, we have never, ever at Jewel City Church had an argument in our board meetings. Never, never. Because where there is unity, God will bless. Do you hear me? Our staff, we meet on Monday mornings and we cry together and we pray together and we love each other. And when people walk, one of the ladies from this church came to me last night and said, Pastor, when we come to your church, uh, we feel, uh, sense an overwhelming love. Uh, let me tell you something. The church house should be a place of love. The Staff should be a place of love. The board should be a place of love. There should be unity. And you say, oh my goodness. Uh, we got to grow up and be what God wants us to be so we can be a demonstration to the world. The world's out there where they're fussing and fighting. Uh, but God wants to have unity. God wants us to live it out every day so we can be a demonstration of the goodness of God. Uh, even in your household, uh, your children don't need to see you fussing and cussing and fighting. They need to see a demonstration of the goodness and the love of God. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. <laughs> Woo! Immature Christians are controlled by their own desires. Being controlled by your own desire will stunt your growth. God wants you to grow. I want you to, maybe you're not used to the neighbor game, but I like it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you big baby. <laughs> now, here's one more thing I want to say there. Don't you leave and tell somebody that I called you a big baby because I didn't. Your neighbor did. <laughs> right? So in this kingdom, we are not mere just anything. You hear me? Faith links us to the supernatural creator. And we now have super attached to us. Once we come to know Christ, we are linked with the super. And that super is connected to our natural. So now there should be some supernatural abilities in our life. For Philippians 4 and 13 said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. God wants to set us free to operate in a higher realm, in a higher reality. And God wants us to live from the kingdom reality as a witness as a manifestation, as a demonstration of the goodness of God who will change the world and become a world changer. I don't say this in arrogance. 
I am a world changer. They are a world changer. You should be a world changer. You should be a world changer. This morning early, I got a text from a young man I don't even know. He's a part of Fairmont State. There's about 20 of them that come to our school while they're, or excuse me, come to our church while they're in school. He said, Pastor, I'm transferring. I won't be back, but I want to thank you for being a positive influence in my life. Whose world are you changing? Are you changing anyone's world? We should be world changers. Do you hear me? God wants people to see what heaven is like. He wants them to witness what he is like. And we are his witnesses if we are believers. And Jesus told us to pray in Matthew 6, verse 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The will of God can't be done unless the kingdom of God comes and it comes inside of you and I. Once we come to know Jesus, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven comes alive with inside of us and he wants us to show the world his goodness. Listen to what Romans 2 and 4 says. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. The goodness of God is what will lead the people of the world to repentance. You've got to tell somebody. You've got to let it out. You've got to tell people what God has done in your life. I can't remember the exact statistics, but very few Christians have ever led somebody else to Christ. I get called to someone's deathbed and I go and it's good old church folk from our church and I say, it could be their dad, their mother, are they right with God? And I say, I don't know. I hope so. What in the world? You hope so? That's your mom, that's your dad, that's your child. You need to talk to them about the goodness of God and you need to ask them where they're at with God. Do you hear me? 1 Samuel 16 and 7, men looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. People want to see on the outside what is on the inside of us. They don't care if you show up with the King James Version while they're in the hospital. They want to hear, they want to hear about the goodness of God. They want to see what's on the inside of us. When someone pulls in front of you, and, oh, how's that work for you? Huh? They... We need to share the goodness of God. If you're going to give them any kind of hand signals, it ought to be praying hands. That kind of ticks them off anyway. Sometimes I do it and I don't feel real anointing. <laughs> Woo! God never intended for this much word that we have. We got the word everywhere. Man, you got podcasts, Twitter, Ditter, Skater, Facebook, books. TV shows, God never intended for this much word to go forth without a demonstration of his power and his goodness. Could you imagine what would happen to Crossroads Church uh, if everyone would leave every week and demonstrate the goodness of God all week long and tell everybody that you come in contact? I got a horse. Uh, I got a horse and a buggy. Honestly, I got a horse and a buggy and the ferry showed up this week and my wife was in the house and, and she knew, they told us about how long it would take to put new shoes on him. And, and she come out a long time later and she said, uh, she told me later, I knew you was out here telling them about Jesus. Out there in the barn, I'm demonstrating. I'm giving them the goodness of God. And what did they do? They both standing there and they had tears coming down their eyes. And the next day, I got a text from the farrier said, I'm so glad you shared the goodness of God and you took time to pray with us. Uh, I didn't just call them to get shoes on my horse. I want them in the kingdom of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you'll share the goodness of God, the church will explode around the world. Can we stand to our feet as somebody comes back to the, give us some music? Put our hands together and show appreciation for the goodness of God that's been in your life. Just give me two minutes, all right? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that don't mean anything. When we spend time in the Word of God, 
And in the presence of God, we begin to transition out of the flesh into the spirit, and God begins to change us. And then we begin to learn how to live in God's kingdom. And the enemy wants to keep us from the knowledge of God. Man, I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm not just going to say this because I'm visiting and I can leave. If you're only coming to church and you are never in the presence of God Monday through Saturday, you need to make a transition in your life. And you need to begin to pick up the Word of God and learn and read because God will transition you out of living in the world like a slave and you'll live in the kingdom of God like an heir. Let me talk to you real quick about the law of abundance. Jesus came preaching in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. In 3 John, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So when we spend time in God's presence, we will find that he is a God of abundant provision in every area of our life. Woo! That excites me. He's already laid up in an inheritance, an inexhaustible supply for his people. The Almighty God, one of His name is El Shaddai. God all sufficient means all bountiful. The God who sees and the God who provides. The kingdom of God is heaven on earth. And if you've not gotten anything else, I pray you get this. The kingdom of God is about heaven on earth. It's about sharing what you have. Sharing about the goodness of God. Sharing how God walked through a storm with you. It's about blessing people. My wife and I love to bless people. People say, well, you got the money to do that now. Well, I didn't always have the money to do that, but my father always had the money to do it. My heavenly father. <laughs> it's about blessing people. It's about preventing misfortune in their lives. So I challenge you to start to think like God. Again, Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The way we receive that life is by getting past the limitations of our minds and entering the possibilities of the Spirit by having faith in God's Word. This young man that texted me today, I texted him back. I said, so what would you like to do? What do you feel like God is leading you in life? And he said these words to me. He said, I don't know. He said, I'd really like to work in the front office of a major league sports. And I texted him back and I said, put God first. Dream big. Go at it with all that you got. Don't ever tell somebody they can't make it. God knows the desires of our heart. So today I challenge you all to be a witness and go and tell somebody what God has done for you in your life. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I truly believe the most important part, excuse me, important part of the message is the invitation. And I don't know your hearts here today, but I will never ever speak anywhere without giving an invitation for people to come to know Jesus. God loved each one of you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross that you could have life. That you could have it with abundance, but you can have it for eternity. And the blood of Jesus has washed you. Many of us in this room but my friend, there is only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. One of our church members is right up the road right now. His brother flipped a boat on Mount Storm, a lake. They've been there all week long. I got a text last night that they found his brother's body finally. The other man's still missing. I don't know his brother. I don't, I don't know, but I pray that he's right with God. 
But I do know that everyone in this room, I'm accountable. When you leave this house today, you're going to know that there's only one way, and that's Jesus. My friend, if you have never humbled yourself and acknowledged that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, you are as lost as lost could be. But today, by the grace of God, no matter where you're at in life, no matter how far you've went from the cross of Calvary, no matter what you've done, God still loves you. If you have never prayed and asked Christ to forgive you of your sin, heaven is not your home. The Bible says you cannot be saved unless the Spirit of God draws you. And I know the Spirit of God is here, and I know the Spirit of God is tugging at your heart. And I'll not embarrass you. There's nothing embarrassing about it. But I want you to be ready. None of us know. When that man climbed in that boat Monday morning, he never realized it was the last time he'd tie his shoes. Today, are you right with God? If you are not, right where you're at, I'm not coming to you. I'm not going to drag you down here. Slip your hand up as high as you can and say, Today, Pastor, I want to ask Christ into my life. Is there one in the house? Is there any in the house? Any at all? I see your hand, sir. Is there somebody else? Would slip your hand up. Make sure. No. Without question. I'll see your hand, ma'am. Somebody else. And I want you to pray this prayer with me and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Lord Jesus, today, I acknowledge that I have sinned and I have fallen short. And God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. And I repent of my sins. Lord, I'm sorry. And Lord, from this day forward, I'll do my best to live my life for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Now listen, Jesus was not ashamed of you and I on the cross. You need to tell somebody immediately. You can come to me. I'll be in the back shaking hands. You can tell me. You tell whoever you came with. You tell Pastor Dane. But you let it be known that, hey, I gave my life to Christ. God bless you, Crossroads. I love you with all my heart.